Hello, I'm Dr. Garrett Boyer. Welcome to Gospel Minded, where we spend a few minutes each week talking about themes related to our psychology, our emotions, our behavioral health, and we reflect on how these important topics relate to the gospel reading for the week. Like always, this isn't intended to be a substitute for actually going to church or counseling, therapy, spiritual direction, if you're engaged in those sort of practices. But like we know, so often our psychology and things of the mind go hand in hand with our spiritual life. And boy, isn't that the case today? Here we are at the end of the Easter season celebrating Pentecost Sunday. Happy Pentecost and happy birthday to the church where in the gospel the Lord appears and, and breathes this new life into the apostles. And that's the Holy Spirit. So I want to read for you a little bit of the gospel today and then connect it to that first reading because they're talking about the same thing. So the gospel is from the gospel of John. And it says this, On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, and whose sins you retain are retained. Wow, just beautiful, uh, fascinating scene painted for us by St. John in today's Gospel. But now I want to go back to the first reading from today because it's talking about the same thing, that Pentecost story. But the first reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles, which was written by Luke, who also wrote the Gospel. So St. Luke paints this picture of what happened at Pentecost. St. John in the Gospel paints this picture. This is what Luke says in the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind that filled the entire house. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were all astonished, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. Wow, to me, that is just the most interesting thing to think about and to ponder on this Pentecost Sunday, that the Holy Spirit descends upon all of these folks who come from all over the place, who natively speak different languages, and now all of a sudden, through the Holy Spirit, who has come to rest on them as a tongue of fire, they can understand one another because of this common language, this language of Pentecost really remarkable stuff. So how does this relate to psychology? What, what do we want to talk about with this theme of Pentecost from the readings today? You know, in psychology, uh, different subsects of the discipline, there is so much that could be said about language, especially when it comes to development or learning theory. So many different uh, theorists and, and thinkers and writers have spent a lot of time commenting on the importance of language and language development and how we use language and, and what it means to 
the human experience really to be able to communicate. So I want to talk to you today about language as well, but I want to talk about it in a little bit different way. When I, as a clinician, listen to folks talk in my office, some themes that I have picked up on over the years are that when folks get themselves into a bind, sometimes it's because of the things they do. That is true. There are choices that sometimes we make which are not helpful and can get us into trouble. But so, so, so often what gets people into a pickle or a bind are the things that they say. I've been hearing this phrase a lot lately, uh, and it's so true. It's words mean things. That is absolutely right. Words do mean things. And too often, and I, and I am guilty of this as well, we use our words in ways that are not helpful, that aren't helpful to us, that might be deliberately hurtful or, or bothersome to others. We have this great gift of language and our ability to communicate. And so often we use our language, we use our ability to communicate in a way that does us harm or does people around us harm. And I think that is the, the complete opposite of what the gospel and that first reading are pointing us to today, that this language of Pentecost is meant to unite, to bring together. Here are these people in the first reading from all over different parts of that region, speaking different languages, and yet the Holy Spirit brings them together to be able to communicate that in that language of Pentecost, as it were. So St. James, uh, in his letter, the New Testament, has this, what is sometimes referred to as the St. James Master Plan, the idea of becoming perfected through speech, becoming holy, uh, being the best version of ourselves through our language, through our speech, by being very conscientious of what we say and what we do not say. <laughs> um, those aren't easy things to do, to be constantly aware of what we're expressing. And then there are plenty of times where thoughts come into our mind just want to say something to this person or or speak my mind to that person or point out this thing to that that guy because he's wrong or she doesn't know what she's talking about and I want to say that uh, and it can be hard to as it were bite our tongue and and keep some of those thoughts and opinions uh, ideas to ourselves not easy but what St. James says in his letter is that uh, we're almost like our, our speech operates in the way that uh a horse will be guided with the bridle and the bit. You can control the entire direction a horse takes by what way we're, we're steering that, that bridle and bit. And so it is with our language, with the things that we say. A lot of stuff in our life uh, can go in the direction that we allow our speech and our language to take us. So I just think about some of the clinical experiences I've had. Uh, sometimes working with folks who are having difficulties with a boss or with a spouse. What can happen so often is they'll say, you know, I said something to really annoy my boss, or I said something that came across or, or, or seemed disrespectful or was interpreted as disobedience or insubordination. Or with spouses, uh, I said something that really hurt my wife. Or I brought up a topic that, that my husband has not wanted me to talk about before. And so many times, these choices that we make, these things that we say, uh, can have a way of sort of snowballing. And what initially can be kind of a small thing can snowball into a bigger thing. And that whole process so many times gets its, uh, gets its steam from our speech, what we say. We know that words mean things. Now there's that old phrase, sticks and stones will hurt or will break my bones, but words could never hurt me. But we know that words do hurt. They can cut, they can leave some real wounds. Words mean things. Certainly uh, we as Christians want to use our speech, want to use our language not to hurt, not to cut, not to wound, 
but to heal and unify and to bring together. So my challenge for you on this Pentecost Sunday is to use that language of the Holy Spirit. Be conscientious as best you can about what it is that I'm going to say, how I'm going to say it, and then to think through, is what I'm saying going to help the person that I'm talking with? Is what I want to say helpful to me? We can really uh, do a lot of damage with our words, but we can do so many good things with our words as well. And I think that image from today's readings of the Holy Spirit coming to the apostles, coming to the disciples, resting his tongues of fire, and giving the ability to communicate with others in this profound, unique, and, and amazing, miraculous way. That's what, that's what my hope and prayer for you is on this Pentecost Sunday, that in your speech, you will become the very best version of yourself, and that when you speak, others will be able to know, ah, this is a person who is not out to hurt, not out to get me, but they communicate a message of peace, a word of love. Uh, they represent and reflect the grace and splendor of the Holy Spirit. So, the St. James Master Plan, attain perfection of yourself through your speech. We pray for that on this Pentecost Sunday. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please click like and subscribe, share this. I'd love to see this message continue to be communicated elsewhere. Until next time, I wish you all the best. I'm Dr. Garrett Boyer. I'm Gospel Minded. Take care. Thank you.